This is what a highly sensitive person's career path looks like. For us HSPs, our search for meaning, purpose, and fulfillment in our work can lead us on quite an adventure that falls outside of the cultural norm. With our depth of processing, our tendency to be overstimulated, to feel emotions deeply, a heightened empathy and sensory processing sensitivity, a lot of workplaces and linear career paths just don't work for many of us. And personally, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the beauty of an HSP's life journey. While you might not fit into a traditional work structure, see if you might be a multi-potentialite. We'll talk about how to use the felt sense or intuition as a guide on your path, some different approaches to making money. And at the end, I'm gonna share with you this life direction diagram that I think you're going to really love. Okay, I'm Michael, and I consider myself a highly sensitive person and an empath. And over the course of my life, I have been a graphic designer, IT consultant, web designer, software developer, entrepreneur, director of operations, video producer and editor, film and theater actor, voiceover talent, model, bartender, student of homeopathy, energy healer, and coach. And honestly, probably a few other things that I can't remember at this moment. When people ask me about my career path, I don't really even know where to start. But I do know that from a young age, I think my parents knew that I was a little different and they were really kind to encourage me to just follow my heart in whatever I did. If you're like me, you probably have a really hard time spending your precious life working somewhere that doesn't light you up or that somehow goes against your sense of integrity. It's always felt really central to me that as human beings, we should be able to do what we love and are good at and contribute to others and be compensated for it to live a good life. Maybe you've heard of Ikigai, which is a Japanese concept that refers to having a sense of purpose in one's life. The four elements of Ikigai are passion, mission, vocation, and profession. And they're represented with this diagram that you've probably seen. The intersecting circles are a combination of what you love to do, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. Now, this is a beautiful concept, and I think something that many of us strive for, but it might feel like a far stretch from what you're experiencing right now. And it also might seem overly simplistic given your varied interests. So I've talked to a lot of highly sensitive people that express frustration with their current work situation. They don't know where to turn. They're in jobs that might pay really well, but are totally out of alignment with their values and sense of integrity. The work environment might be toxic, causing them mental and emotional harm, or maybe they're a freelancer unable to properly monetize their passions. I hear HSPs telling me they feel depressed, paralyzed, and overly stressed at work to the point where it just takes over their life. But here's the thing. If this sounds like you, the suffering you are feeling right now is actually a good thing. It means that your body is sending you messages and that you are listening. It means that a part of you doesn't want to settle for a job that doesn't make you feel totally alive. Now, the average person spends about 90,000 hours at work over their lifetime. So I don't think it's crazy that you'd want to be spending that time doing something that feels meaningful. As you probably know, I am very much of the perspective that a lot of the systems in this world belong to an old, outdated paradigm. It's a paradigm that is based on what my mentor, Dr. Michael Lobsatz, calls empire consciousness. This is pretty similar to the addictive system that I talked about in my last video. Now, empire consciousness is created from fear, the illusion of separation and abandonment. And in a nutshell, it is created out of trauma and perpetuates trauma itself constantly. Highly sensitive people who, in my opinion, are tapped into oneness consciousness pretty easily, like you, are completely incompatible with this old paradigm. But guess what? You're here to help create a new system, moving beyond fear to create a new sustainable paradigm. I think that's really exciting. It's like highly sensitive people are programmed to reject the old ways of doing things in order to carve a new path so that others might be able to follow as well. And even if your current work situation isn't directly attached to empire consciousness, it might just not be a fit because you are made to be doing something more or different. So how do we get there? Like I mentioned before, I think we can be really grateful for these amazing bodies that give us signals when something is off or when to pursue an opportunity and maybe beyond what our rational minds are able to see. We all have an internal GPS inside of us. Now, whether what's in front of you is to create your own business or find a job that's totally outside of your current state of awareness, the thing about carving a path that falls outside of the cultural norm is that we typically aren't given a roadmap ahead of time. 
We can only see a few feet in front of us at any given time, which means that we are left to rely on faith and intuition to guide the way. We have to develop discernment to pick up on messages that come from beyond our limited perspective based on our past experiences and programming. In very simple terms, what I like to look for in the body is an experience of expansion versus contraction. If it's our soul's mission to continue expanding and growing, we will know we have hit a dead end when we feel a contraction show up in the body like tension. Now, the reason I phrase it like that is that there can and will be discomfort during your process of carving your own path and overcoming resistance. And it's important not to mistake that discomfort, which is actually part of one's expansion process for a sign that something's gone wrong. But there's a way that you can be in relationship with your body so that when discomfort shows up in any form, rather than trying to impose meaning on it, you can actually just ask the body what it needs. I go into this process in more detail in a free online course that I invite you to participate in called Unlocking the Wisdom of the Felt Sense. Check the description below for a link. It's about a two hour course that walks you through the process of focusing, which was created by psychologist Eugene Jenlin in the 1980s and it has changed a lot of people's lives. So go check that out because it will give you the tools to connect with your felt sense or intuition on a regular basis, which is absolutely what you need when you're living off the beaten path. The other thing with highly sensitive people is that many of us are multi-potentialites, which is a term that applies to people who have multiple interests and creative pursuits. And usually we're pretty good at at least a few of them. Multi-potentialites thrive on being able to do a lot of different things and they aren't interested in being boxed in by a single label. If that sounds like you, then listening to career advice from someone who tells you that you need to pick one thing and stick with it for life might make you feel insane. You might also struggle with sometimes feeling scattered, questioning your purpose, you might have some financial instability, uh, finding fulfillment might be an issue, you might have a crisis of identity, where do I fit in in the world? a lack of recognition, and just generally pressure from society to fit a predefined role. But once you understand that this is who you are and that there's nothing wrong with it, you can stop seeking external validation and instead focus your energy on creating the life you want to live and have a lot of fun in the process. Now, personally, I've noticed something really interesting happening over the past few years with my own career life journey. I had a series of events happen that totally shook up my world a few years ago. And in the aftermath, I was forced to reconcile how I wasn't really living authentically and I was avoiding stepping into my true calling. Before that, I was running a web development company that was leaving me feeling pretty unsatisfied. And I was in a relationship that prevented me from fully exploring my passions. I basically watered myself down and was playing safe big time. As I began to take the steps toward really living my purpose. I've been amazed to see how all of my passions and interests are coming together to serve that mission. For most of my life, I've felt really torn between my different passions like performing, the healing arts, technology, entrepreneurship, and spirituality. I like to think of each of them kind of like different channels of energy. And for a while, they all seemed so disparate and disconnected from each other. But now it's like the puzzle is finally coming together and it's all making sense. So I wanna share with you a diagram that was given to me by my mentor, Jake Kiyakahi. Jake explained to me that over time, all of these different aspects of ourselves are looking to merge, to come together, to serve our purpose. I think that's what integrity or authenticity is all about. And even if we don't define ourselves by one singular role in that purpose, we can at least see ourselves moving into this direction of authenticity. So as we explore these different parts of ourselves, we might understand why they're there or what role they're going to play in the future of this mission or purpose. So that's why trusting our felt sense is so important because it can see the big picture and is guiding us toward wholeness when we might not be able to understand that individual part. So I actually spent some time and I charted out my life from age 10 to 38, I'll be 38 in a few days, to see how these different channels of energy have been expressed over time. Because I was really curious to see how this convergence process works in retrospect. Now keep in mind that we probably have a lot of different channels beyond you know, just these few, but for the sake of discovery, I just narrowed it down to these five. So with this chart, I can see different periods of time when a channel of energy became disconnected, like 
for example, spirituality when I first came out as gay, or the performing arts when I started to take on some shame and I wanted to hide from the world. And I can see all the different careers I've had over the course of my life and how each of them connected one or more of these different channels. But this is the cool thing because right now in this current chapter of my life where I'm at now as a coach and a healer, it's the first time when I see all of these different channels coming online simultaneously. And it's like, it's incredible. Like I get so much joy out of being able to bring them all out at the same time. It kind of feels like a dream come true. But it took me a long time to finally give myself permission to create this path and to take ownership of all these different parts of myself and to stop waiting for someone else to give me permission to put them together. So I'm sharing this with you because maybe you're being guided toward your purpose and right now the steps that are showing up might not make sense to you, but they don't have to. It's important just to trust that feeling, trust your intuition around it. Does it feel like it's guiding you toward your purpose? Does it feel like it's guiding you toward expansion? Just trust the process. And maybe you can use this model as a guide to list out all of your different passions and interests and envision a life that has the room to support all of them in some way. Visioning can be a really important exercise because it helps us to break down our limited beliefs and to prepare ourselves for the opportunities that are meant to come. Now, finally, because this video is about charting your career path, money is an important part of that. Emily Wapnick, who is the author of How to Be Everything, describes these main strategies for multipotentialites. I'll put a link to their book in the description below. So we first have the group hug, which is where you have one job or business that allows you to use many skills or interests in your work altogether. Then there's the slash approach, which is when you might have several part-time jobs or businesses that each satisfy one area of interest. Then there's the Einstein approach. If you didn't know, Einstein had this really menial job that he worked at that gave him the income to pursue his passions. So this is the approach where you have a mainstream of income, maybe something that's not that enjoyable or satisfying, but it gives you the freedom to explore your other interests. And it might actually be a bridge to a future when you can do a group hug with them all together or some other strategy. Then there's the Phoenix approach for those people who are more sequential in their process. And this is where you focus on one passion or job for a period of time, and then you switch on to the next interest once that channel is satisfied or when you get bored. And then there are the hybrids. So like in my case, I'm gonna call what I have going on the double group hug. Right now I work as a voice actor, which provides an income stream that allows me to perform, play around and engineer my own stuff and be an entrepreneur. And then I have my coaching and healing work where I get to express all my passions at once, including making this video. Was this helpful? Let me know in the comments below. My hope here is to just normalize an unconventional career path so that you can explore a life that feels truly authentic to you. I want you to know that it is possible. And if you're struggling in any way as a highly sensitive person, know that you can create a life that nurtures your sensitivity and allows you to thrive. You can trust your sensitivity to guide the way. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this in the future. I'm cheering you on as you create your ideal life. Thanks for watching friend and namaste.